Hi, everyone. Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about how Snowflake and Coda are working together to create the ultimate RAG platform. My name is Barish. I lead the AI and ML product teams at Snowflake. And with me is Shishir, uh, who's the co-founder and CEO of Coda. We're going to talk about three big things. Um, first, we're going to just lay some groundwork on different what approaches people have taken for enterprise AI and why we've become obsessed with RAG in particular. Um, second, we're going to talk about this new product we're building called Coda Brain, uh, being built jointly with the Snowflake team, Barish's team. Um, and uh, you saw a little preview of it in Sridhar's keynote yesterday. And then we're going to go behind the scenes. We're going to tell you a little bit about how we built Coda Brain, uh, four major challenges we went through, and a bunch of lessons for all of you as you go build your own solutions for RAG. Right, so before we get started, just want to call out that uh, enterprise AI is different from consumer AI. Like, there are very enterprise-specific challenges uh, that we'd like to tackle. Okay, so the main inspiration for this talk and for this project was an observation from what happened last year and this year. So 2023, I know only a year ago, we all fell in love with this new product. I like to call it the world's favorite know-it-all, ChatGPT. And we all got very used to this idea of being able to ask this assistant questions and get back useful answers. And everybody's expectation is that in 2024, we're all gonna do the exact same thing, but inside of our companies. But it turns out that doing that inside our companies is a little bit different. So on the left side there are the types of questions you might see in a consumer AI assistant. But on the right side are the types of things we expect people wanna know inside their companies. And they're a little bit different. When you ask what's our vacation policy, you expect it to know your company's vacation policy, not a generic vacation policy. Or if you ask something that could potentially uh, need a, list, a set of data, for example, a list of customers, you expect data, and you expect a table, and you expect a chart. Um, and probably the most interesting is when you ask a question like, who's getting promoted next week? You want everybody to get totally different answers, some people no answer at all. Uh, and to be able to handle that, you have to think differently about enterprise AI. So with that, we see three different approaches to uh, how consumers and customers are using AI. One is, of course, fine-tuning, uh, using uh, your data to create a custom domain-specific uh, large language model. Um, the other one is prompt engineering, where you're using uh, the context window of the large language model and providing all the context and the instructions to the LLM right in that context window. And finally, retrieval augmented generation where you're searching for the right set of documents, the right set of uh, information to pass to the LLM so that the LLM can be grounded and give answers based on those set of instructions and the document snippets. Okay, so there's a few challenges with each of these. Um, first, we'll start with fine tuning. So uh, one analogy for fine tuning is it kind of feels like you have this AI assistant that's read everything on the internet and is ready to answer any question, and you're going to come and bring it new information. And this works great with information that's universally available inside your company. So commonly, you might see people use it for things like your policy information, your benefits, uh, your brand guidelines. So on, those are all things that are pretty widely available in your company. That works wonderful. But much of the information inside companies isn't like that. It has very distinct permissions. Some people have access. Some people don't. Those permissions are changing all the time. And so you have this interesting new behavior of, I want to be able to tell this AI assistant about something but then come back afterwards and say, actually, I, admit, I didn't mean it. Please unlearn that thing. It turns out fine tuning is great at some things, but this idea of unlearning is not a thing we've learned how to do yet. That's right. So the next one is prompt engineering, uh, which is very convenient. You could provide all the instructions into the prompt directly. So for instance, if you want the large language model to build a uh, product requirement stock, you could imagine providing the set of instructions, the uh, kind of sections that you want the large language model to, uh, to include. However, when you look at the context window sizes from uh, you know, some of the um, you know, commonly used large language models, you're limited, right? Um, and when you think about this in the enterprise context, uh, you immediately run out of, out of space. So for instance, for that uh, product requirements document, you might imagine that you'll have customer meeting notes, you'll have you know, internal research notes, and all of those will uh, force you to run out of space. So, uh, along with many other people, we reached the conclusion that the answer to a lot of these problems starts with this term, RAG. Uh, this is a fun quote from Reid Hoffman. It seems that RAG is becoming the de facto solution for enterprise AI. It gives models up-to-date context that respects enterprise permissions without constant retraining. 
Uh, I think many people here are probably familiar with RAG, but just to define how we think about RAG, uh, it's a simple multi-step process. Rather than training our assistant or passing things into a prompt, we divide a problem into multiple steps. And when we ask a question, we ask the assistant to first go and pull the right source of information, take those, ask, that, ask a question just of those sources, and give back a response and generate one uh, answer back from all of that information. So we, along with many other products, have arrived at this as the core architecture for how to build the enterprise AI system. OK, so at Snowflake, we have our own managed product uh, suite called Cortex AI. Cortex AI is running on top of governed set of data that you have in Snowflake. So all the access controls, all the governance, all the security that you've uh, put established for your data is respected by Cortex AI. And Cortex AI provides a series of uh, large language models uh, from uh, partners like uh, Meta, uh, Reka, Mistral, and others. And all of those uh, large language models are running fully within the Snowflake security boundary. No data is shared with, the, uh, with these. And as of uh, you know, this morning, Christian announced two new products that we're making available as part of our Cortex suite. One is Cortex Search. Cortex Search is our product that allows uh, you know, all of you to build, uh, you know, to, to do searches, to, to do RAG systems for documents. And Cortex Analysts, which is our product that helps uh, you build uh, you know, structured data chatbots to ask questions uh, of the, you know, business intelligence questions to, to the large language models. And with these set of building blocks, uh, we thought you know, our partnership with Coda is the perfect way to bring all of these things together to build uh, Coda Brain. So. OK, so we're working on a new product. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. Uh, we're working on a new product called Coda Brain. Uh, it's a turnkey RAG platform, and the goal is to turn, um, turn data into action for your whole enterprise. Okay, so when, uh, you know, this all started with uh, you know, Shishir and Christian, uh, when they started talking about how the two companies can, uh, you know, work together, the realization was that enterprises tend to be split-brained. You know, on one side of the brain, uh, you have all of the data, uh, and uh, usually only the data platform teams tend to have access to them. And then the other side of the brain is you know, the rest of the company that want to turn that data into action. And we thought we can bridge the two gaps and make it very easy for the enterprise to unlock the value of that data, and that's what we set out to do. OK, great. So let's talk a little bit about um, Code of Brain. So as I said, the turnkey RAG platform, turn data into action across the enterprise. Um, maybe just to tell you a little bit about Coda first. So for those of you unfamiliar with Coda, Coda, we build an all-in-one uh, workspace. It blends the flexibility of documents, the structure of spreadsheets, the power of applications, and the intelligence of AI into a single surface. Uh, Coda is used by about 50,000 teams around the world, a few million users. And it's an all-in-one product that covers lots of use cases. People use us for documents and write-ups. They use us for uh, team hubs and wikis. People use us as uh, a replacement for spreadsheets, uh, building trackers, uh, what we call actionable business intelligence. And uh, Code is also used as a no-code platform for building custom applications as well. But in this process, we decided to build a new product. So we're calling this Code of Brain. I like to call it your, your team's favorite know-it-all. And one of the key elements, I'll give you a demo of it in just a moment, uh, but one of the key things we're doing is building this in partnership with Snowflake. This is a little bit of a, 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 a peek inside of how Coda Brain works. I call it the Coda Snowflake Coda Sandwich. Um, so at the bottom there are Coda Packs. Uh, so Coda Packs is our platform for extensions in Coda. Uh, there's hundreds of these that, that have been built by, uh, by Coda and many other uh, people in the Coda community that connect to basically every data source on the planet and bring them into uh, Coda. So that formed the basis of what we're doing. On top of that, we're using all the main components of what Barish described in uh, the Snowflake Cortex stack. And then on top of that, we're building our RAG engine. OK, so with that, let me give you a quick peek into how Coda Brain works. And I'll just switch here. So um, first thing you have to do is you have to fill your brain with data. So here I'll have, for example, I can come in and search for all sorts of different data sources that we have here. Maybe I want QuickBooks. Uh, maybe I want, for example, Jira. For each service, I can go and set it up. Uh, I can give it different parameters, tell it uh, to pick different projects, to pick uh, a subset of my JIRA corpus. But in this way, the first step in setting up your brain is to go and arrange all of the different data for your company into one place. Then I can turn around and ask questions. So 
Uh, let me start giving a few examples here. Maybe this first one I'll start with is our favorite example. What's our vacation policy? So this is gonna do like any RAG system. It's gonna go first, do the retrieval step. It goes out and finds all the relevant documents to look for our vacation policy, uh, finds different sources, and then comes back with the response and a citation that I can see exactly where it came from. Um, I can use uh, this to get to more complicated things as well. Maybe one I'll try is, have we thought about building a desktop app? So in this case, it's gonna go off. This is something that's in lots of different data sources. It's gonna find all of those and put together a multi-part answer um, that, uh, hopefully let's see what it comes back with. Um, that tells me how it's uh, pulling together answers from different sources into a single result. So instead of getting a search list, I get an aggregated uh, a set of across, looks like four different sources that it found here. So that's pretty good. Um, now let's ask something that may be a little bit more sensitive. So maybe I'll say, uh, what did Jane Smith say in her exit interview? So we had an employee leave, her name is Jane Smith. So this is gonna go looking for uh, Jane's exit interview and try to give a summary of what her uh, experience was. So in this case, came back with a nice thoughtful summary of her, of her, uh, of her last talking points. Um, what about someone that maybe I shouldn't have access to? So I'm gonna go and ask again. Let's wait for Jane to finish. She had a lot to say. Um, the, uh, uh, now I'll ask, what did Maria Williams say in her exit interview? And this is an employee that I don't have access to. Um, and hopefully it's gonna come back. Okay, good. So uh, I came back and said, can't really find much about an exit interview for Maria Williams. It did find Maria Williams, so it knows who she is, but said, I can't really answer that question for you. So this is an important part of as you build a RAG solution, you have to be able to separate the permissions of different parts of the stack so that people get different answers. Okay, now sometimes what I want in an enterprise AI solution is I want data. Um, so this time I'm gonna ask for our sales opportunities over 10K. So in this case, it's going to pick the data source. Uh, in this case, it picked Salesforce. And it's using Cortex Analyst to go and turn that text into a SQL query, and it comes back with a table of results. So a lot of services would go do a search, go look for the term 10K, look for sales opportunities. In this case, it came back with a table of all the results I'm looking for. Um, it's actually filtered, so it, it interpreted that into this filter, so it says $10,000 to anything. I can go and say, I wanna see all the opportunities, or I wanna filter them down to just some of the bigger ones. Um, it's a fully working table, so I can take this and maybe I wanna group it and say, I wanna look at these opportunities by stage, uh, maybe I want to take those and then filter that further. So I can go take this, drag my slider, and now I can go find uh, the most important opportunities grouped by, um, grouped by stage. Um, you can do this across any data source. So for example, I might say, uh, what are my meetings with Buck? Um, in this case, it'll pick a different data source, uh, picked uh, calendar um, correctly, and it's going to come back with an answer. Uh, looks like it messed up the filter a little bit. Um, oh, okay, this one didn't quite work. Uh, didn't get the right answer, but that's what it would uh, normally come back with, is here's my list of meetings with this particular attendee, Buck. Um, it actually works across any data source, so I got some very surprising results when we set up with Brain. So one I asked is we have a pack for Spotify, so I thought, what would it do if I said, what are my favorite uh, tracks? Um, and so in this case, in this case it went off, found the Spotify data source and came back with a list of my favorite tracks. So these are some of the different things you can do with uh, Code of Brain. Uh, many more use cases to come as well. All right, what's everyone think? Woo. Okay, so next we're gonna take a look inside Code of Brain. So a fun product, uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you wanna know how does it really work inside of uh, building this uh, RAG platform? Uh, <clears throat> so we're gonna walk through the, the, uh, the construction of Code of Brain as four primary challenges. Uh, how we fill the brain with data, how we deal with unstructured responses, how we deal with structured responses, and then finally how we take those results and put them to work. 
And in each case, we'll walk through a little bit of what the challenge was, how the building blocks from Snowflake work. I'm gonna to try to give you a few actionable lessons that you can apply as you build out your own RAG solutions. All right, uh, so the first one we're gonna start with is filling the brain. So if you wanna build a RAG solution, you have to start with what is in the, the data store that can be retrieved by your system. Okay, so the start of this is filling your brain with data. As I mentioned, in the case of Coda Brain, we started with our ingestion platform we call uh, Coda Packs. Um, so we have hundreds of these that have been built uh, and uh, issued publicly. It's super easy to build more. There's thousands more built inside uh, companies. One of the key characteristics of Coda Packs is that everything is synchronized along with the permissions of the data that, it, that it's coming from. Um, as a reminder why that matters, we need to be able to ask questions like who's getting promoted next week, or what did Maria Williams say in our exit interview, and have people get different answers. So how do we do that? Um, we started with Snowflake. Yes, so Snowflake offers a very flexible role-based access control system um, so that uh, at any part of the you know, Snowflake object, you could attach, uh, you know, you could, you could attach pr privileges. And this type of flexibility is really needed when it comes to building enterprise AI. So in the case of uh, providing, understanding when to answer uh, about a HR-related question, for instance, you need to be able to model uh, per source as well as kind of for each user who the user has, what the user has access to and what they don't. So, so the Coda used uh, you know, Snowflake's role-based access controls deeply to model this complex web of uh, relationships. Okay, so a few different lessons here. So as you think about building your RAG solutions, uh, the first thing you're gonna have to figure out is how to retrieve and model uh, ACLs, access control lists. Um, so here I picked uh, two examples. Um, so on the left side, we have Google Drive. Um, so in Google Drive, you have a set of documents. Each of them has the ability to be shared. You can see what the share dialog looks like there. You can share with principals, you can share with groups. On the right-hand side, you have Salesforce. Salesforce is a very different model for how to think about access control. You can set basically any rule you like uh, that, uh, that governs who can see which different object inside of the Salesforce, Salesforce repository. The goal in both cases is the same. We want a data store that looks something like this. It's a little bit oversimplified, but we basically want a row per entity that our RAG system can go get to with the payload, the data for that entity, as well as the list of users that have access to it. So that's sort of what we're trying to build for both these cases. But it turns out that the way to do it is a little bit different in each case. So on the left-hand side are a set of services where we've taken what we call a top-down approach. So these are services that offer an API where you can retrieve data as well as access control lists in a format that's pretty close to our intended format. So services like Google Drive, Gmail, Box, so on, they'll give you what is often called a meta API, which will tell you for every entity who has access to it. And then you have to, you have to requery it and keep it in sync, but there's a sort of straightforward way to get to it. On the other side, we have services for which that's not quite possible. So services like Salesforce or Greenhouse or Jira, they offer such flexibility in their access controls that you're really not gonna get very far trying to replicate those access controls. So in that case, we do what we call a bottoms up sync. So instead of synchronizing on behalf of uh, one person, the IT person, in this case, every user who connects, you know, user A, B, and C, we take each of their, their privileges, we connect directly to the system, retrieve data on their behalf, and that way we have confidence that the same, we get the same data that that user would have access to. At the end of the day, you actually need both techniques. And so Coda Brain ends up using uh, both approaches uh, to build one common view of all the data in your company and who has access to which. So as you build your RAG solutions, you'll have to answer that question. How do you get to each of these different data sources? It also means that you have to think hard about the setup process. Um, so now you need a setup process that works for both admins and end users, which is something that's often a little bit different than how many such systems are, are set up. You have to think about how to synchronize permissions with data. And what we found is that even though users have access to data, we've had to build in, as we got customer feedback, layers of control beyond that so admins could further control what users can sync. So even though this user may have access to this data, I still don't want that in Coda Brain uh, or set new, new rules on top of whatever is coming from those source systems as well. Okay, so now that you've filled the Coda brain, all of the knowledge uh, base, uh, and, and, and you're ready for, uh, for your chatbot, uh, we now want to go in and figure out how do we build a chatbot for unstructured data. 
So as you just showed in the demo, um, you know, Coda Brain is a product that has a very approachable UI when it comes to kind of interacting with unstructured data. Um, you know, you ask a question and you get a you know, summarized, helpful uh, you know, snippet back along with citations. And in order to support this, of course, uh, we need to build a RAG solution. Uh, we need to first figure out, given a question, what are the most relevant documents and what are the most relevant parts in these documents to pass to the large language model. And, and then the large language model will uh, do its task. So of course here, uh, quality is really important. Uh, and vector search is a very common uh, way to achieve this task. So vector search allows us to figure out, given a phrase, what are the most relevant parts of the document that are most close to what the user is asking about. Snowflake offers Arctic Embed as a vector embedding model that is used behind the scenes to power CodaBrain uh, when it comes to document understanding. Arctic, uh, Arctic Embed is a very capable model. It uh, you know, performs uh, the highest, uh, in, in, uh, in the highest benchmarks when it comes to uh, its, its own class. And it does so while being incredibly efficient. So when you look at the size of Arctic Embed, it is about one quarter the size of OpenAI's embedding models. And it's, uh, that small size means it's faster and it's cheaper while achieving higher quality. And we announced a new product. Cortex Search uses Arctic Embed behind the scenes as a part of its solution. So Cortex Search is a hybrid uh, search product that maps, the, that combines vector search with a lexical keyword-based text search. And when you get the world's best, highest performing embedding model, and you add on top of this a very capable keyword-based uh, model, you get the world's highest quality. And this is all powered, uh, afterwards we do a re-ranking, so you get the highest, uh, uh, highest quality possible. Cortex Search is offered as a REST API, so uh, you know, Coda uses this REST API to get the most relevant chunks uh, you know, from, uh, from, from the Coda packs, from, uh, from its database, and then passes them onto the large language models. Cortex offers a large set of uh, LLMs to use uh, for your chatbots. Uh, these, uh, these are some of the most capable models out there, um, it, uh, you know, large ones for complex tasks, right, or, uh, like orchestration and reasoning that are necessary for complex uh, RAG solutions, as well as some of the smaller ones that are really good for uh, you know, batch type analysis. And all of those are super seamless to use, all running inside Snowflake, uh, and available through REST and Python APIs, um, as well as SQL. Okay, so a few lessons uh, from building Coda Brain for the unstructured path on Cortex. So the first one is raw search quality. And I'd say initially the team started with a view that maybe this isn't that hard. Maybe we can do it a different way. We started by building our own version of uh, a semantic search engine based off of a, a simple vector model. And we gradually added each different piece, injecting contents, uh, context, uh, coming up with our own hybridized model, um, as well as doing some of our own re-ranking and then compared it to what we were getting out of the all-in-one solution with Cortex Search. Um, the left axis there is normalized discounted cumulative gain. It's a fancy way to think about search quality. Um, and what we found is uh, that the hybrid approach is very important. So in the world of search, you're saying uh, vector search and lexical search sort of have to come together. And that Cortex Search has delivered uh, so far the best solution we can, we can come up with for a combined search solution. And when it comes to quality, you know, a lot of our customers think, uh, oh, you need, you need only embeddings. And to improve the quality, I need to fine tune that embedding model to improve the quality. With Cortex Search, because it's a hybrid system, um, you, know, you don't have to worry about fine tuning an embedding model. Instead, you could provide it signals to improve ranking. So in, in Coda's case, uh, you know, we were able to provide things like when was the document last accessed, uh, you know, what are the you know, popularity signals that we could provide to the system. And with all of those signals, the system can increase and improve ranking. So as users, as customers of Cortex Search, you have a lot of intuitive uh, input into the system to influence and improve the ranking. Okay. Um... One more important lesson as we think about unstructured answers is hallucinations. So hallucinations are 
a, uh, a characteristic of AI that we've all gotten used to in our consumer lives. In some cases, even a little bit fun. Uh, but in the enterprise, it's not generally acceptable. And thankfully, the RAG approach does lead to a natural solution here. Um, so as part of every prompt, you can hint that I'd like you to provide citations. And Cortex Search will be a do a nice job of injecting the response of well, the sources they used for the response in context of the, uh, of the actual response. So you can see it's showing up in different spots here with different citations. And then the end experience looks like what I showed earlier, where every different part of your response has the has a citation. So as you think about building your ragbots, um, you know, how, encourage, uh, increasing confidence that the answers are trustable starts with giving people the ability to go find the source of every answer. Okay. So unstructured responses are, of course, very familiar. Uh, you know, that's, uh, you know that's, that's the bread and butter of chatbots. But in the enterprise space, uh, sometimes customers want direct access to the data. Uh, and when it comes to structured data, that's a much trickier business. So in the use case uh, that the, you know, she here demonstrated, when a customer asks a question like, you know, show me my opportunities that are higher than $10,000, uh, you know, we need to understand in a clean way, not just provide a summarized answer, but provide the data itself. And to do that, we need to write SQL. So it turns out, writing SQL by LLM is, is, is really challenging. Uh, it is a, uh, it, it's, an, it's an iceberg problem. It's very easy to build demos, and the demos look well, but the real world is much messier. You, know, you have tens of thousands of tables, hundreds of thousands of columns. Sometimes column names are not easy to understand. And we've been working hard at solving this problem in Snowflake. And I'm uh, proud to say that we've achieved a really strong results when it comes to generating uh, SQL from text. Uh, you know, Snowflake achieves state of the art and by a wide margin, uh, being able to provide uh, accurate, uh, executable SQL given, given text. And we do that by combining a series of models, our own uh, text to SQL model, along with uh, you know, Mistral's Mistral large model to orchestrate. Um, and we kind of map that together with Cortex Search to do, uh, you know, to, to do the search uh, engine. So together as a solution, it provides the state of the art. Okay, so a few different lessons here. As you think about building chatbots for your company, if you move beyond unstructured responses and you want to build structured ones as well, um, solving this text to SQL problem is, is certainly hard. Uh, the, the way that we've done it is to divide the process similar to RAG into a stage of finding the right tool and then finding the right query for that tool. So you'll notice in the examples I gave, it picked in one case Salesforce, it picked another case Calendar, it picked another case Spotify, and came back with the right results. So designing an, uh, a similar type of RAG model that finds the right tool for, that's appropriate for your query and then finds the right way to get the right results. And that's not just what is the query, but also things like which columns do I show? Should I show it as a table or a chart? How should I group it together? How should I, uh, uh, how should I make the present presentation look are all parts of that problem. Okay, the next problem is hallucinations. So hallucinations are hard in the unstructured world. They're similarly hard in the structured world as well. How do I trust the result that came back? Uh, so one of the things we've worked hard on is the, we think the equivalent of citations in the unstructured world is pre presenting back active filters in the structured world. So in this case, the ability to hand you back not only the result, but the query in a format that you can go adjust it, we think increases the confidence that I can trust the results that are underneath it. Finally, one last challenge with structured results is how to hand context into those queries. So for example, if I come and say, what did my team do this week? The interpretation of what is my team is something you have to figure out how to give that information to your system as well. So in our case, we'll do a lot of work to pull that from other sources to try to interpret that, for example, your org chart or your team chart or so on, and make sure that as you generate SQL, that's a piece of context that is unlikely to be held by the, uh, by the LLM. Okay, so uh, now we have structured responses coming back through Code of Brain. Uh, one last challenge is taking those responses and putting them to work. So it's not just enough to give answers to queries. We actually want to create action out of all this data, so our, as we talked about earlier. Um, so one of the key things we've been building here is the ability to take any response from Code of Brain and quickly add it to a doc. And so you can take this one-time one answer, turn it to a constantly refreshed query, and it becomes in Coda what we call a sync table. Um, those are just normal tables in Coda. You can go and modify them. You can add columns. You can add buttons. You can add automations and so on. And we've seen people use it in a number of different ways. 
A uh, few quick examples here. This is an example from a product team um, that uh, used this interface to build a way to take their PRDs for their uh, product team and add live data for all their features so they can make actionable database decisions. This is an example from a customer that deployed the solution for sales teams. They ended up building a doc per client where they had one account hub per client that had all the data for that client, including CRM data and ticket data and so on. And they could go and say all the usage data could be made actionable with a button that would go auto invite people to a webinar. And one last example, this came from the Snowflake IT team as they used uh, the solution to build out a way to interpret their data about software licenses. So they're going through tool consolidation. This pulls all the data from everything from uh, DocuSign to uh, tools like Okta and ServiceNow and gives a recommendation on which tools they should keep and uh, renew or they should um, uh, remove. One last thing here is as we've been building up this RAG platform, for most of this talk, we've been focused on how we're building a solution for uh, for end users, for knowledge workers. Uh, but actually, as we've been designing it, one of our design points is to make the back end available to your teams as well. So not only will your knowledge workers love Co Code of Brain, but your data and developer teams can directly access the back end with an API or with, uh, with SQL. And the idea here is that we think as many companies move towards a rag based architecture, you'll likely have to rethink your data design. And having a data warehouse that is, is pre-filled pre-configured and pre-encoded with every entity having the right shape, the right, in, um, the right vectors, and the right ACLs. So you can go build your own AI-based solutions on it. We think it's gonna be very valuable as well. Let's try to put it all together. Um, there are four key challenges that we talked about today. And they're all solved by our work, uh, you know, Snowflake plus Coda, bringing it together in the Coda brain. So first, we talked about bringing all the knowledge together in, in one place and ways to retrieve ACLs uh, that are really important, and ensuring that the setup is really simple and seamless, both for the admin interface as well as the consumer interface. Second, we talked about unstructured responses and how in the unstructured responses, hybrid retrieval is important from a quality perspective, and that quality is key to reducing hallucinations. We talked about fine-tuning not fine-tuning the embedding model, but rather providing signals, uh, ranking signals, popularity signals to the system so that the system can increase quality. And finally, we talked about using citations to substantially reduce hallucinations uh, using prompts. Uh, we then moved to structured responses, uh, which are kind of more challenging. And the first thing we talked about is finding the right tool. So given a query, what is the right data source to, uh, to source from? Uh, and then, Similar to un uh, structured, uh, unstructured data, uh, here the way to reduce hallucinations is through uh, providing the filters in the UI directly so that it invokes confidence and provides control. Uh, and finally, using the implicit context uh, and expanding that implicit context before you ask uh, you know, the uh, LLM to generate SQL. Uh, and then, uh, of course, putting it all together, making it available to uh, you know, data professionals like yourselves as well, you know, turning queries into documents, Having APIs and SQL to be able to query the data directly is what uh, you know, Coda, Coda Brain offers. I think that's our time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>